Christ destroyed our death, rising Christ restored our life, Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Nancy put on Christ. So in Christ may Nancy be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here in this space and in this time to praise God, to witness to our faith, and to celebrate the life of Nancy McDonald Shepherd. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, in death resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and who now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially today, we praise you for Nancy whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're invited to join in standing and singing with us the old rugged cross.
Psalms 121, uh, verses 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. As you probably know, our mom was an English and language arts teacher at Brentsville High School for many years. That was when she went back after having had children. And um, so it should come as no surprise that she loved reading, <laughs> 7,900 books on her uh, Goodreads list. And she often used journaling as a form of therapy. And as we were gathered for her final hours last week, David had found her writings and brought them to the hospice. And we spent some of our time sharing her writings and laughing and crying as they spoke to us. And Reminders was written um, by a woman who was far too young to be a widow. But it really spoke to me, and I'd like to share some of it with you. I'm not reading the whole thing, but just some of it. <laughs> she starts off, three years ago when my father died, I was distressed to see two people's lives reduced to a box of mementos. I tried to write poetry to express my feelings, and after several attempts, I finally had something I could live with, a piece of writing I felt good about, and peace of mind, an unexpected result. This past summer, as I cleaned the den and packed Carol's treasures away, I was struck again with the thought that I was reducing a tremendous person to a box of things to be stored in the attic. This man whom I had loved for more than half my life had been such a big, vibrant person that I have problems with storing his mementos in a box. I had read somewhere that if reminders are painful, it is best to get them out of sight. It sounded like good advice. I put most of the reminders, the Boy Scout mugs, his Avon bottles, and his jewelry in a box and set it in the attic. I cleaned out his clothes, but the boys each laid claim to some treasured items his old red Boy Scouts of America jack shirt, which he wore to all scout functions and was wearing the day he died, hangs in the laundry room. A painful reminder for me, but for some unexplainable reason, a comfort to the boys. These reminders are all over my house, but it would do no good to get rid of them, of those things. I have four reminders which are much more effective Carolyn, whose name is spelled with two R's and two L's because her father's was. Timothy, who has his father's gentle, loving ways, but who also has his father's quick temper. David, who hears Thoreau's different drummer and couldn't care less what the neighbors say. Ruthann, who looks like her father did when he was a child. I look at the children and I see Carol. I listen to them and I hear Carol. Then I know I am blessed. Even when our hearts are breaking, we are blessed. We just need to look for the reminders like mom did. There is nothing more profound in this world than to be loved by someone for exactly who you are, with no caveats, no conditions. This is the kind of love where you never have to wonder if it's true. Don't even have to hear it be said. You just know. My grandma <laughs> was the picture of this profound love. She was the kind of person who, when you show up at her door, no matter how sad, alone, exhausted by the world you may feel. She was ready to welcome you in for a cup of sweet tea and some of the many, many snacks from her pantry. You could sit yourself down on the couch, watch the game show network or reruns of the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> and sometimes she would laugh and sometimes you wouldn't know why 
but you would laugh too. If you're lucky, she would get to talking. Whether it was about the time her students watched baby birds out the classroom window, or when she and her siblings painted her little brother, or about one of the many, many, many goofy pets she had over the years, you knew you were in for a treat. My favorite, though, was when she would tell me about my grandpa. I loved when she would talk about meeting him in an English class in college, about how she just knew he was the one for her. Or when she would tell me stories of how he would always protect her, about how even when her too damn independent side came out, a very strong gene in the family, by the way, (laughs) he still loved her. The way she spoke about him always brought me to tears because I could hear the way that she loves him, the way that he loves her. I say loves, present tense, deliberately, because love like that is not confined to the limits of life. I mean, if you look around the room, there are so many of us here, not just in the room, but some of us simply in this life because of the love that they share. What's brought me some peace in the last week is knowing that somewhere out there, depending on what you believe, they both get to see all that they built together from the same perspective. After all this time, finally, she gets to hold his hand while they watch over us together, and I know that we will still feel their love long, long after today. When you experience love like this, like the love between my grandparents, like the love my grandma, grandma gave to everyone in her life. There is no way to walk away from it unchanged. For me, my grandma is the reason that I love cats, flowers, plants, and cooking. <laughs> She's the reason I love to read and why I love writing. My grandma is the reason I'm a strong, independent woman, why I'm unafraid to walk to the beat of my own drum, as she always used to tell me I do. She's the reason I believe in true love the person who makes me want to be better every day. She's the reason I wake up trying not to take any moment for granted, the good and the bad, and I know that as I'm standing here crying for her, it's what she would want, to feel all of the good things, all of the bad things, (laughs) to make room for all of the good. I know that despite everything, she thought her life was pretty darn amazing, as she told me when I interviewed her for a school project a few years ago. I know she would want me to think of all of the good things to remember her the way that she lived, with the heart wide open, but taking no crap, and having not a single regret. I'll leave this now with the advice my grandma gave me at the, same, at the end of that same interview. Be the best you can be. Treat others the way you want to be treated, and play fair. I know I'll strive for the rest of my life to follow this advice, to make her proud, to bring a part of her spirit with me in everything that I do. Once your tears dry, even if it's just for a little bit. Do something that keeps a part of her alive in you. Donate to your local library. Thank a teacher. Buy something you don't eat just because you know your friend loves it. (sighs) Wear a silly t-shirt no matter what you think anybody might say. Play Candyland. Take in a stray, human, animal, or otherwise. (laughs) Cook a meal for the ones that you love. Read a Stephen King novel. Sing, even if you think you can't carry a tune in a bucket, or have three Oreos before you go to bed. (laughs) My intro song, I'm sorry. (laughs) Hello, friends. Grandma was an integral part of my life, and to her, to her, I owe a great deal. I'd say there's four or five people that have had the largest role in shaping me into the man I am today, and most of them are here today. And Nancy was always a constant role model for me in the way that she treated me. When she told stories, which we all know she often did, she nearly always spoke about good memories, including a feed in someone's eye or lima beans in someone's milk. And even while writing this, I could hear her telling me those stories and remembering them, and I couldn't help but smile. So in true grandma fashion, I'd like to share some of my favorite grandma stories and memories. Throughout my childhood, I knew that grandma was an excellent teacher. When we'd visit stores, she would stop, get stopped by former students who would share stories with her and thank her for what she had taught them. 
no matter how long ago it was. What I didn't know and what I fully recognize now are the lessons that she was teaching me. There weren't formal lesson plans or a bell to let me know when class was over, but I most certainly know that she was teaching me lessons every time that I was with her. She taught me multiplication to ensure that I got the bonus in Yahtzee. <laughs> Without the extra points, I had no chance of beating her. She'd tell me stories about Grandpa and how competitive he was each time they played board games, and how if he rolled what she would call a bunch of nothing, he would call it a fiddly wah diddly. <laughs> I'll always treasure her playing Yahtzee with my kids and teaching them strategy, and knowing, them, and knowing when to cut bait and to cross out that Yahtzee, just to get the bonus. She taught me to always order the same thing at a restaurant, or a restaurant, as she would call it. No matter how many times we went to Mamma Mia, she would always look at the menu and then order a Sam's burger with lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and black coffee. No matter how old I got, I always ordered the same miniature pizza and ate her french fries. We'd play word association, and I learned so much about words and how they relate to one another. She would always remind me when I was older about the time that I told her that cows didn't have horns, they wore bells. After we finished eating, we'd go to McKay's, and she'd she taught me that even after you read a book, it still has lots of value and trade credit. We would spend hours at the bookstore, and I always get to pick out at least one book. I still go to McKay's with my kids, and I think of her every time we bring in at least two full bags of books. There were so many nights I'd find her asleep in her bed with a book on her chest, and books have always been a portal to another world, and she was the best tour guide that a kid could ask for. After McKay's, it was time to go home and use my sharpened word association skills to watch Jeopardy. To this day, I'm still not sure I know what a potent potable is, but I do know that if you don't answer the clues in the form of a question, you might as well have not rung in. She'd answer the clues with so much speed and accuracy, it was hard for my young mind to comprehend what was going on. When a question was incorrectly answered by a contestant, she'd call them a dingbat or some other pejorative, which always made me laugh. <laughs> Following Jeopardy, if I was well behaved, I was allowed to get up and change the channel on her enormous floor console TV. Only one of the channel select buttons worked, and if you went past the channel for Star Trek, you had to go all the way back around until you got to channel 20. We'd laugh and joke as Pandora came in and laid on Grandma's afghan, and Grandma would pretend that she was a roller coaster and shake the cat violently. She'd get tired of it and eventually wander off. And when Pandora died, I distinctly remember the way that Grandma handled it with me. She told me all about remembering the good times we had instead of being sad about losing her. I didn't really know what that meant then, but today that advice has never been clearer. Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. You see, the most important thing that Grandma ever taught me was not in the words that she said, but instead of the way she treated me. Every weekend, week, season, year, I was there. She made me feel important. She always took time to hear what was going on in my life, and she shared hers with me. When I needed a place to stay, as a stray, she was always available. When I needed help buying books for community college, she was there. When I needed to vent about my problems, she was there. And when I got married and had my own family, she was still the loving grandma that I grew up with. The impact that Nancy Shepard made on this earth will be felt for generations to come. Not because of the words she said or the things that she did, but the way that she made each of us feel. She had an uncanny ability to make me feel loved without being effusive. Grandma will always be one of the single influences on the trajectory of my life. So I invite each of you today to put the distractions of the world away, sit down with someone you love, drink an enormous glass of sweet tea, and tell stories. Pick up a copy of your favorite book and tell someone about it. Remember the things that are truly good in this world and invest in each other's lives the way that Grandma poured into ours. She'll be greatly missed, but I know that my life is much richer for the way that she invested in me. I know if Grandma could quote a book to tell about her family and the time she spent with us, she'd probably use this one from where the red fern grows. You were worth it, old friend, a thousand times over.
First Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through seven. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. God, put your loving arms of comfort around us as we hear the age-old message of hope, of life eternal, of peace, of reunions. Comfort us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Remind us whose we are and to whom Nancy has returned. Give us grace, O oh God, for this hour and every hour. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, you gathered here this morning and you heard wonderful stories of Nancy's life and you laughed a lot. And that's amazing because many times when families gather together, there's no laughter. They're not able to remember or to celebrate the wonderful things that a person has done. And to be able to be with the family and to hear you celebrate a life well lived is encouraging because it means that you won't leave this place feeling defeated today. You'll leave this place celebrating the life of a woman who lived it well. You will live this, leave this place lifted up because of the influence that Nancy had on your life. You talked about the fact that she was a daughter a sister, a mother, a wife, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a teacher, an influencer, a reader. She was progressive for her own day and time. But now I want to remind you that even though she was all those things, she was one more thing, and probably one of the most important things, a child of God. And because she was a child of God, she had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, which means that even though she is no longer with us, as Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today, all her struggles, all her trials and tribulations are behind her, and nothing but glory and anticipation and hope and joy are before her. And even in life, she took struggles and use them as opportunities to learn, to teach, and to overcome. I first met Ruth Ann during COVID and all the crazy stuff that was going on. Got to know her mom through her stories of her determination, her willingness to keep going. And even though the last few years was probably the most difficult in her life because she was unable to be with those people that she wanted to be with, the people that loved her and supported her as much as she wanted and needed, and friends and former students whom she would encounter, they had to keep in touch through Facebook or telephone calls or mostly text messages, I understand. But whatever way she reached out to those people that she loved and cared for, And as you were reminded earlier, one of the greatest ways that you can honor her life is to continue to be the kind of person that she was. A person of love and compassion and kindness, a person of dedication, a person of commitment, and a person with an open mind. You don't find many people in her age bracket who are as open-minded and willing to accept and love as she was. Who was passionate I saw a couple pictures of the t-shirts she liked. Hmm. <laughs> the books she read, especially her advocacy for those books who were on the banned list. A real forerunner in her thinking. 
and in the way she lived. But more importantly, did you hear me? More importantly, a child of God. Nancy, even though these past few years were difficult, understood what Paul talked about in the book of Romans when he said that there is nothing in this life that can separate me from the love of God. Nothing. Sorrow or sickness nor death nor separation or anxiety for all these things are nothing compared to the love that God has for each and every single one of us. She experienced that love when she came in contact with her family, her former students, her co-workers, one of whom I talked to last night extensively and heard more wonderful stories about what an amazing individual Nancy was. And if you want to leave a mark on this world, be more like Nancy. Be more open-minded. Be more loving. Be more accepting. Welcome the strays animal, people, or otherwise. <laughs> Makes me wonder. <laughs> Through all that she was and the way she lived her life, she painted a picture of faith and determination. When she lost her husband at a young age and raised her children by herself, Overcoming obstacles in a time that that was probably one of the most difficult things that a single mom could do. And she raised them well. And helped with the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. She leaves behind a legacy of kindness and compassion because of who she was, but more importantly because of who Christ was in her. She lived her life in such a way that the light shined in the darkness and when it, even when it seemed that the darkness would overtake, I am sure that Nancy was even more determined to light more candles, to show more love and offer more kindness and compassion to those who may feel excluded or forgotten or neglected. This is the way that those of us who are left behind, who are believers or followers or questioners or people who are seeking, should live our life and exemplify the life of Christ, as she set an example for those of you who sit in this room today. Oftentimes, teachers are criticized, but she was a mind opener and a life shaper, not only for her family, but for other families that she came in contact with. Thanks be to God. She opened books, lots of books, <laughs> and found joy, and sometimes not joy <laughs> in them. She was brutally honest. You always knew where you stood. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you also always knew what you were going to get. You would get the truth. But you get the truth in love. Because of who she was and because of who Christ was in her. And so, when the time came, I'm sure she wasn't afraid to go. Probably many of the hours that she laid in the hospice care, she spent longing and hoping torn between two worlds, wanting to be here with family and friends and at the same time looking forward to being with the true love of her life again. I heard Ruth Ann say last night that one of the last things she said to her was chocolate. You know what that says to me? She was a good woman. <laughs> An amazingly good woman. And so today, she lives eternal, resting in the care and the presence of the one who gave her life, surrounded by the ones whom she loved who've gone on before her. And people talk about heaven. 
you know, with pearly streets and gold streets and pearly gates and all those other things and rivers that flow with milk and honey. But I bet and have to believe that Nancy's a lot like me. She longs for rivers that flow with chocolate. (laughs) And hopefully today she is able to drink from those chocolate rivers and to experience life like she wants. She probably doesn't care that she has a mansion, but would be happy living in the library. (laughs) Reading those books, all those books, again and again. Surrounded with family and friends. And so, loved ones and friends, I would encourage you to have your spirits lifted. Because of her faith, because of her compassion, because of her kindness. And know that because of God's grace, Nancy lives. In a land where there is no more sorrow, nor sickness, nor death, for all the former things have passed away. Know that grace is abundant for her and for you. Know that God's peace is available to help you lift your eyes beyond the shadows of this earth. To to catch in this moment a glimpse of the eternal, of the promises that have become real for the one that you loved. Celebrate her life. Have a piece of chocolate. Read a book. Do all those things he encouraged you to do. But more importantly, love one another as Christ has loved you. And let love rule your life. Let love rule. And to you, Nancy, rest in the presence of the one who died for you and with those who've gone on before. Finish the journey you started years ago with the love of your life and celebrate and wait for family and friends to join. In that glad reunion day, when all of God's children are reunited again with those they love. Oftentimes, pastors have to lie at funerals. This is one I haven't had to lie at. And I'm pretty confident, and I'm pretty confident that I can say today, that I know where she is. That I know where she is. And I can say that with confidence, not because of who she was, but because of who she loved and who lived in and through her. And so, when Nancy closed her eyes in death, she woke up in the presence of the one who gave her life. And today, she sings and dances and reads renewed and invigorated all sorrow and sickness gone because God is good and faithful and just let us pray eternal and loving God we give you thanks for a love that never fails for grace that is abundance, for acceptance into your kingdom and acceptance by those we love and who love us. Open our hearts and minds now, O God, to your presence and to the power of your Holy Spirit. Bring certainty of life eternal, of joy. Fill Nancy's loved ones with fond memories of food they liked and didn't like, of really, really, really sweet tea, (laughs) of a lap to sit on, an ear to hear, and a heart to love. 
Comfort them now, God, with your spirit. Not only today, but tomorrow and the days that are before them. For we ask this prayer and all prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to join in standing with us as we sing the hymn of promise. Oh, I'm sorry. There is a scripture. Sit back down. Let Dave do that. I'm glad she was a forgiving person. John 14, verses 1 through 4. Jesus says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way, the place where I am going. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.